Hey, what's up you guys? It's Bloody Jacob here, bringing you another video. This one's going to be doing a little review of a movie called 88. And I know I just did a video showing you the day I got it in the mail. Uh, but I just want to show you the DVD again really quickly. Of course I have the Blu-ray copy. I love the cover, very slick. Very sharp looking photo of Catherine Isabel, sexy badass all at the same time. Love the pictures from the movie shown in there. And uh, yeah, so the movie is basically about uh, Catherine Isabel plays her, well, plays a girl named Gwen, and basically her boyfriend gets murdered, but she's not sure exactly why. She wakes up somewhere and it sort of makes you think it was most he was most likely killed by this guy named uh, uh, Cyrus, yeah, that's his name, Christopher Lloyd's character in the movie. And it goes into this whole elaborate setup of, you know, showing how and why, but it really keeps it a mystery until the end. And uh, her boyfriend in it, uh, Aster, is his name in the movie, but the actor who plays him, Kyle Schmid, I think is how he pronounces his last name anyway, as I mentioned before, was on season two of Being Human. He also made an appearance in the final season, by the way. He played Henry. So it was really cool to see him, even if it wasn't a bit of a small role. Not really a small, it was a big role, but you know, he only had like a few scenes, but he still did pretty well for what it showed. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to run through like all the plot in this, because what the movie does is that it sort of like shifts between, sort of like goes back and forth between uh, two different realities. And, you know, like in one, you know, she's on this whole kind of revenge streak. And, you know, she's, like, really cold. She's, you know, badass, like a stone-cold killer, basically. And, you know, she's completely sighted in on Cyrus, you know, and focused on doing that. And then the other reality it goes from, she has no idea what's going on, and she's, like, really scared and, you know, petrified of everything that's going on. And that was, that was like, one pick I have against the movie. It was a bit confusing, but I think it was kind of meant to throw you off a little bit because the way it went back and forth... I wasn't sure, and apparently some other people weren't sure if, you know, if that actually happened, if that happened before or after, or if one is, like, completely false altogether or what. That part of it was a little bit confusing, but once it, all, once it got closer to the end, it all started making a little bit more sense. And, uh, you know, I say Gwen is in, like, a bit of a state of psychology where, you know, she, a traumatic event just happened and so she's hallucinating and you know different things like that so it kind of explains why I would be doing that I get it and uh, before I get to the ending and different things like that there are a few other things I want to talk about of course but like I said I'm not gonna run through the whole story every scene of the movie sort of like I did with the first stranger snaps but because I would take too long trying to explain and connect all these different scenes that took place in different uh, realities like I said but I did want to talk about quite a few things of it. Um, like the director, uh, April Mullen, she also played uh, Lemmy in the movie. And she did a fantastic job with this directing this movie, let me tell you. The, everything about it was really, really nice. Um, she was also pretty charismatic in her actual acting role, too. Now, I also want to praise the visuals in the movie. This like the coloring of it and the way the camera moved around, the camera work of course, um, as well as the sort of like a cinematography is all really surprisingly smooth. I mean, I, I'm not saying I was expecting her to do a bad job or anything, I'm just saying I'm pretty impressed, uh, really. It sort of gives you like a Robert Rodriguez vibe to it, you know, if you've seen the movies like Machete, uh, Grindhouse, and things like that, it, the violence and the action in it is sort of like that, as is the tone at times, you know, it's serious, yet it's over the top. This one wasn't really, like, over the top, but it was kind of serious, but yet trying to be a bit comedic at the same time. And I liked it, you know, uh, at first I thought, I was thinking I was prefer, I preferred, like, a straight-up drama you know, like, slow building type of thing, which would have been good in its own right. 
But this, the way they did it here, turned out to be very fun as well. You know, the action was exciting, it was uh, tense. So, yeah, I'm not going to bash that at all. It was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, um, let's see. There are things I want to talk about. I'm just trying to think of what next. Um, yeah, like, uh, I was very tired last night, so I was, like, sort of, like, slightly dozing off when I was trying to watch it, but don't worry, I did stay awake. And I also wanted to uh, give some praise over to Christopher Lloyd. Um, he did a fantastic job. Uh, he actually didn't have too many extended acting scenes, but the ones he did have, he was very menacing. He definitely came off like the bad guy. He played that ver part very well. And uh, the ending scene, uh, I should wait to talk about that, but he just gave like gave off like a very layered and heartfelt performance and he's very a very good actor i haven't seen him on much of course everyone knows from back to the him from back to the future but i haven't seen him on much but i did want to say he did a great job with this role so uh yeah and and you know it was really cool see, of course seeing Catherine as well acting like a badass um, which she does very well, by the way. She's awesome like that. I love seeing her kick some ass. That's like a big reason why why I got like 13 Eerie. Um, of course, besides being a fan of zombies, you know, it's just really cool to see her be able to kick some ass and, you know, really uh, lay it on someone. <laughs> like, um, even in Torment, you know, it's really cool seeing her fight back against the psychos and stuff like that and the, fa the cult family and stuff. And she was really good with that role, part of her role in this as well. You know, she gave off that hard attitude, and she played that off really well. And I know I'm, I kind of sound like I'm repeating myself, which I probably am a bit, but, uh, hey, cut me some slack, man. Anyway, um, let's just see, I just want to remember if there's anything else specific I want to mention. Um... Oh yeah, some of the best scenes in the movie, besides the ending scene I, I'll talk about in a minute or two, was probably when she came back to her apartment that she had with uh, Aster, of course, you know, the, her lover who was killed. And arguably the best thing in the movie, besides the ending scene, was she was alone by herself in a room, and she just, she sees flashes of him in her mind, and she just, like, slowly breaks and has a complete meltdown and a breakdown, and it's really raw and really powerful. I'll say it, it was, power, it was a powerful scene. Catherine Isabel is my favorite actress of all time, no damn question about that. So I already knew she's a fantastic actress, but this scene even impressed me with already having that in my mind. She, she really impressed me here. Like, the way she broke and cried and stuff just felt like so real, raw, and she really projected the emotions well and made it really believable. And I can't praise her enough for doing that. Katie is a great actress, and this has to be one of, if not her, best performance in any movie or show. So, yeah, it's really well done, Katie. Really, really great job. I love you. But, uh, so that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie as well. Um, you can kind of see like part of that scene in the trailer too, where she sort of like lays around where they mark the where the body was, her, her boyfriend's body was laying. You know, she screams. That's a part of it. It's really even more effective once you see the whole scene, obviously. Um, but yeah, I did want to talk about the ending. Um, like I said, I kind of go through like every part of the plot because I'd take way too long, and I'd probably just start talking myself into a corner. But. Uh, the ending, you know, she, in general, she finally confronts Cyrus, and, you know, they talk it out, and they're just kind of going back and forth with each other, and we find out that, you know, of course, he was calling her Gwenny throughout the movie, and, you know, the forgetful part of her that wasn't remembering things, you know, was asking him why she calls him Gwenny, and we find out that basically, uh, Cyrus had actually adopted her when she was a kid, you know, she lost her parents, obviously, somehow, or something along those lines, and, you know, he adopted her, but it turned out to be, of course, there's a lot of abuse and, you know, different things like that, you know, he had apparently, uh, raped her, 
at least once if not more probably more and you know it's just like a terrible way of bringing her up and he sort of he doesn't n deny any of that he sort of like says you know there are th you know, basically things he regrets and things he wishes he could take back because he obviously does care a lot about her in the end but uh, so that was a really really nice performance from Christopher Lloyd a really good scene from him um, he really pulled off the, the complex layered thing at the end despite being this like uh, what we thought was a straight, more of a straight up bad guy but he really showed that there's more to him more to his character Cyrus so that was all really good and of course Catherine Isabel uh, he uh, Cyrus eventually has her Gwen come to this realization that she had actually killed her boyfriend oh ho oh. <laughs> okay that's a bit of a twist um even though he could sort of he could sort of like think that's what could have happened but it turns out she it turns out they were involved with cyrus and the other criminals before it all before she killed her boyfriend and you know they had been involved with that world and they're trying to escape and uh astor was gonna marry her and they were gonna go away by themselves together and Cyrus didn't want that to happen because I guess he is still a psychopath pretty much. Uh, and so when they're on the run, you know, Cyrus is coming up into the apartment, the apartment with his men, and uh, Gwen is very panicked. And so when she heard the first like bump in the next room, she turned and shot whatever was there. And of course, it was her boyfriend Aster Kyle Schmidt who she shot. And yeah, this really tragic and a bit of a surprise. I mean, of course, I'm sure some of you kind of thought that's what could have happened, but I thought it was still it's a complete, you know, oh my God, I really feel for Gwen just, just now realizing again what she did. And it shows her sort of getting up all, like after she like tends to him and he sort of, you know, finally dies from the wound. You know, she gets up and she's like really cold and stoic and stuff. So. You can guess that's sort of when the psychology of, you know, her forgetting exactly what happened occurred. And then she left and wandered off, you know, after having, like, a brief uh, stare with S Cyrus when he came in. So that was all really good. That re it's The reveal is pretty surprising, but not, like, overly surprising. But what made it was the way it affected Gwen and uh, with the way Cyrus, uh, Christopher Lloyd, delivered it. So... That was a really good, well done revelation. Um, it really, you know, it was really effective for the characters and both Catherine Isabel and Christopher Lloyd show that in a fantastic way. So that ending was very good as well, but unfortunately, of course, Cyrus blew his brains out after that. So that was unfortunate, but he sort of felt like he was going to deal with sitting in the chair with the police approaching. I also like the guy who played the one of the main cops in this movie who is sort of interrogating Gwen. I forget, I don't know the actor's name, but he did a good job as well. He sort of like, could like relate to what she was going through. And, you know, uh, Gwen at the end sort of like, lets the cops come in and catch her. And, you know, they just have like a brief stare with each other. And, you know, he sort of gets what went down in there. And then it shows uh, like a flash of her back at the diner where she accidentally, you know, shot one of the waitresses earlier, which is really uh, fun. <laughs> But uh, it shows her with one of the other guys in the movie, and you know they sort of like have a laugh, and you know it's just kind of touching to give it that kind of ending to it. But you know I would kind of prefer it if they just like cut to the credits with uh, Catherine Isabel and the cop looking at each other. But this is still like a nice touch to the end of the movie, I thought. And yeah, I could go further. There are a lot of other plot points I could talk about. There are other little scenes I could mention, but. Just, uh, just in general, I thought you know it would take too long to break all that down, but just in general, I thought this was a very, very, very fantastic movie. Great directing from April Mullen, who is also charismatic in her performance, as I said earlier. She also produced it. I'm sure uh, she did a fine job, obviously, and also Christopher Lloyd, very menacing, very layered. He really exuded that in a really nice way. And everyone else, like all the other like smaller parts of the cast, they were all fairly solid for the most part. There wasn't really like a noticeably weak performance among them. Like sure, some of them like didn't blow your mind or anything, but you know their roles were a bit more limited. But they still did a very solid job for what they had. And the true highlight of the movie is, of course, Catherine Isabel. Fantastic performance! I can't say that enough. 
uh, some of her best, probably her best performance since Ginger Snaps. And uh, this could be my favorite Catherine Isabel movie since the Ginger Snaps trilogy. And she just showed the raw emotion, the power and behind everything that happened. She played the badass really well. She was the, was a good confused victim. She just like had to showcase like all of her acting range in this, like her incredibly wide acting range. She really showcased in this, and it was all really, really great, really amazing work. And she just proves to me time and time again why she's my favorite. Like it's obvious every time I watch one of her movies, and I'm definitely gonna keep up with what she does. Like I always have for a long time now. So yeah, eighty eight, a great movie. I definitely recommend checking it out. Picking it up on Blu-ray, DVD, whatever you want to do, even checking out online, but I recommend buying it because it's well worth it, well worth adding to your collection if you're a fan of Catherine Isabel, Christopher Lloyd, or just like a good uh, mystery, uh, thriller, drama, action type of movie. It's well worth the money. Definitely recommend checking it out, picking it up. So yeah, great movie. I'm very happy and proud to have this in my collection. Um, don't tell us Saskas. I love you, John and Sylvia, but I may prefer this movie a little bit more over American Mary. Now they're going to probably come and kill me in my sleep, but both great movies. They're both very different movies, so I can't really compare them. But yeah, I really did love this one. So yeah, check it out and buy it if you get the chance. And I'll catch you guys next time. And uh, peace. Also, a little write up in the description if you didn't feel like hearing me ramble for about 17 minutes or less. <laughs> But yeah, catch you guys next time. Peace. Such an awesome cover.